If you're sitting at home feeling fine, thinking you're perfectly healthy, well, half your luck. But be warned, living among us is an increasing number of new age gurus who believe you've still got some issues that need fixing. Now, it turns out, very kindly, they can help for a price. They claim that coffee enemas, carnivore diets, intravenous drips, even burning vagina-scented candles will give you much-needed zest. These days, the largely unregulated world of wellness is worth $7 trillion. That's three times more than the traditional pharmaceutical industry. But is all this effort to get healthy actually making us sick? There's no better way to start an investigation into the wellness industry than by making sure my chakras are aligned with a bit of sunrise yoga. And as we breathe in, we're lifting up the top leg as high as you can. Exhale, floating down. This simply glorious location is the Eden Health Retreat in the Gold Coast hinterland. In an industry that's seen its fair share of flashes in the pan, this place is a mainstay of the wellness movement. Why do you think people come here? They're aware that something in life isn't right at the moment. And so they're coming for the space to pause and look at what it is that's not working. And it's space to really pause and reflect. <laughs> Shona Phelps is the general manager at Eden, where for $700 a night, guests can keep it simple with some clean eating or branch out into some more left field relaxation treatments like sound bowl therapy. Health and wellness is a long game. There's no quick fix. When you see some of the new health trends hitting the headlines each year, do, do your eyes sort of roll back in your head a little bit and you think, oh, here we go? Definitely. We've seen so many different practices come and go in the health and wellness space, and those that have stuck are the ones with integrity and, and evidence behind them. Wellness. Now, there's a word you don't hear every day. It means exactly what you might think it means, the opposite of illness. It was the late 1970s when wellness first burst onto the scene, and it's been evolving ever since. And because you're a woman, for much of your life you need iron. Much more iron than even a man. That's why we offer you one-a-day vitamins plus iron. I, I don't know how I'm alive right now. But in the last few years, it's been turbocharged by influencers and podcasters across the world, all with a new must-have product that you simply have to buy if you're serious about your health. How bad do you want to feel good every day? And perhaps there's no more famous, or some might say infamous face attached to the modern wellness movement than Gwyneth Paltrow. When I started Goop in 2008, I was like, my calling is something else besides, you know, making out with Matt Damon on screen or whatever. <laughs> The actress is now worth a quarter of a billion dollars thanks to her empire, Goop, which promotes everything from fitness trends to candles that, well, you can read the label. As we're recording this right now, you have a little IV, so, which is so on brand for both of us. We pod an IV at the same time. The most recent controversy was Gwyneth doing a podcast boasting about her intermittent fasting diet while simultaneously receiving nutrients through an IV drip. I love an IV. I'm an early IV adopter. Glutathione, I, I love to have in an IV. Kind of a random, more fringy one. Phosphatidylcholine, that's my favorite IV when I can find them. They're quite hard to find. Yeah. And those make me feel so good. There's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to wellness. But, you know, trying to rationalize and convince somebody or a culture that's committed to misunderstanding you is a is an act in futility. Dr. Will Cole is one of Gwyneth's health besties, a regular face for Goop followers who runs his own wildly successful telehealth consultancy 
in one of the hottest trending areas of wellness, functional medicine. That new age practice is often dismissed by conventional doctors, but functional medicine proponents claim it uncovers the supposedly hidden causes that lead to people's chronic health issues. In generations past, you know, if we were interviewing a doctor, it'd be some stuffy old guy with a stethoscope around his neck, and here you are, you know, good-looking young rooster with healthy skin and a beautiful head of hair and a denim jacket. You know, this is the, the changing face of health, I guess. Yeah, I hope so. I think that's good. I think that speaks to the world changing and uh, sort of a, a breath of fresh air, maybe, in the conversations around health and wellness. Someone on my team said recently, it would be like going to uh, a dentist with bad teeth. <laughs> Hopefully I can look the wellness part. Do you wake up feeling refreshed? Are you more exhausted when you wake up? I feel more exhausted. But when you become a celebrity health figure, your services do not come cheap. An initial one-hour telehealth consult with Dr. Cole will set you back more than $1,000. But still, many people can't get enough of this modern wellness guru. What's up and welcome to the art of being well. I am a leading functional medicine doctor. And as the kids say, he recently broke the internet as the host of that podcast where Gwyneth Paltrow revealed her controversial eating habits. I usually eat something about 12. Mm -hmm. um, and in the morning, I'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar, right? So I, I have coffee, but I really like soup for lunch. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. You've done so much work with Goop and with Gwyneth Paltrow, and she and her business for a lot of people either sums up everything that they love about wellness or everything that they absolutely hate about this industry. Why do you think she has become so polarizing here? I think that this is an example of selective outrage where people are hyperventilating about bone broth and intermittent fasting. Yes, intermittent fasting and bone broth could probably seem radical, but I think it's our disconnection that it's how far we've fallen as a society when it comes to optimal health that that is considered radical. Oh yes, please remind me, Gwyneth, when were our Paleolithic ancestors sticking cannulas in their arms and giving themselves phosphatidylcholine in a bag? Oh yeah, they weren't. When you hear the word wellness in 2023, what goes through your mind? Fad diets, coffee enemas, the carnivore diet, and um, useless IV drips when you can just eat food and drink water. This is Dr. Idris Mughal, better known on TikTok as Dr. Ids, where he's become a hit for calling BS on new wellness trends. As we can see here, these are some of the results from all of the individual studies showing that generally... He's dismayed that so many people are being sucked into fads that he claims aren't supported by medical science. And it is a tiny pediatric feeding tube that is going to feed me a perfect balance of nutrition for the next 10 days. The fact that there are individuals willfully putting these devices in is frankly disgusting. Bread is literally depression. Why? If you eat bread, you will get depressed. I had no idea bread was the seventh infinity stone, altering reality and creating mental illness from nothing. It's always got to be something inaccessible to the vast majority of people. Always got to be something that's hundreds of dollars. In your mind, is the wellness industry motivated more by health or, or by profits? Not by health at all. Profits. Absolutely. It's almost trying to make up a problem to get you to believe that you have an issue and then you have your foot inside the wellness door. Everything you see is targeted towards you, right? And so if you've got an issue, well, oh, amazingly, they've got the solution as Amazing. well. Yeah, exactly. Spot on. So, and, you know, the way that the algorithms work now online and with what you search for on Google and what you see on your Instagram feed or your TikTok feed, you know, once you spend a bit of time looking at one thing, you'll get marketed everything else surrounding the same topic. Wellness has become complicated, um, slightly self-obsessed in a way. I find it actually becoming more constraining rather than liberating. You have 100 needles in your face, Elise. Just another day at the office. Oh Elise Lunen lived and breathed the wellness culture as Goop's chief content officer. 
The backdrop to this photo, a typically provocative marketing move for the brand. Goop describes itself as the tip of the wellness spear, and Gwyneth Paltrow said it simply wouldn't exist without a lease. But in 2020, she caused a stir when she quit, vowing to never do another cleanse diet and launching what she described as a rebellion against much of the wellness industry. Why did you step back from your role? Ultimately, I don't, I don't want to think about marketing or advertising or business or margins. I want to write. I want to make a podcast. I want to think about the world outside of business constraints. I do think that for those of us who are in good health, an obsession with our health is not good for us. And there's a difference between being preventative and being vigilant about our care and making ourselves sick with concern. Women are very ashamed of feelings that we think are not nice. Elise has now become a prominent voice calling for the health industry to cleanse itself of some of its toxic habits. She still believes there are plenty of positives in wellness, but instead is encouraging people to focus on what she calls wholeness rather than sweating on the small stuff. I don't want to be my own doctor. I really don't, because I will give myself five to six diseases by lunchtime. Dr. Google is, is a pretty scary yeah. doctor. Dr. Google's terrifying. And, you know, I, my dad's a physician. I um, sometimes wear an Apple Watch, and I kind of had to stop. And I had a sleep tracking ring that I definitely had to stop using because I was compulsively checking my stats. And, you know, I kept texting my dad, well, it says that my, you know, respiratory rate changed. Uh, what does it mean that my HRV is fill in the blank? And he was like, stop. Like, honey, stop. Th it means nothing. <laughs> One of the biggest problems with the wellness industry is that because of people's obsession with looking for health advice online, the moderate voices are often drowned out by those with some of the most extreme viewpoints. You're a doctor? I am. When was the last time you ate a vegetable? Uh, <laughs> uh, probably about five and a half years ago. Why? Plants are trying to kill you. Dr. Anthony Chafee is a picture of good health, a ball of muscle who makes chin-ups look like child's play. But remember when you were young, your mum would say you won't grow up to be big and strong unless you eat your vegetables. Well, this wellness warrior is on a crusade to disprove that theory as a prominent online promoter of the controversial carnivore diet. You're a doctor? I am. When was the last time you ate a vegetable? Uh, <laughs> uh, probably about five and a half years ago. Humans are apex predators top of the food chain. What other apex predator eats salad? There are things in meat that you have to have that you cannot get from plants, but there is nothing in plants or fungus that you have to have that you cannot get from meat. So you have to eat meat and you certainly don't have to eat plants. And I would argue that you don't want to eat plants for optimal health. It's worth pointing out straight away that this is a very heavily contested theory and he's been repeatedly slammed by fact checkers. But that hasn't stopped hundreds of thousands of people following the Perth-based doctor's teachings about the increasingly popular carnivore diet. It is exactly what it sounds like. Animal products only and no bread, fruit or, heaven forbid, a vegetable. Take yesterday, for example. What did you have for breakfast? I only ate once yesterday. <laughs> I found a, a place by the hotel that had ribs and a stack of burger patties with bacon. And that's all I, eat. I ate yesterday. How many ribs? How many, how many burger patties? I had, a, I had a full rack of uh, pork ribs. And then the stack of patties, there's three patties. Uh, they had cheese and, uh, and six slices of bacon. Not, not full slices, but just little pieces. Like traditional medicine. Doctors would say that's not just unhealthy, that's dangerous. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But those same practitioners and those 
that that same advice has gotten us fatter and sicker than we've ever been in human history. You in heaven right now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is, this is like going into a candy store for me. <laughs> you sure you don't want some salad? I do. Go on, look at that goodness. We sat down to a meal together at meat restaurant Macelleria, and Anthony tucked into another one and a half kilos of beef and lamb, while I complimented my meal with a supposedly toxic salad. That's pretty healthy, I'm told. Is it? Dr Chaffee is convinced that plants are a potentially deadly food source after being taught that by his university professor two decades ago. But now, in the age of people searching for health solutions online, he's found a huge following, eating up his teachings. So I remember thinking in my head, I was like, but, but vegetables are still good for you though, right? Like overall. And my professor of cancer biology just looked at us and, and gave us a funny look and he said, I don't eat salad. I don't eat vegetables. I don't let my kids eat vegetables. Plants are trying to kill you. And so in my head I said, right, okay, I'm just gonna stop eating vegetables. There'd be a lot of people watching this now thinking, this bloke has lost the plot. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Your viewpoint is very much the minority. Absolutely. How can so many health experts be wrong? Well, uh, people were wrong about a lot of things. You know, the most of the, the experts thought that the world was flat at one point, right? That changed. Brussels sprouts had 136 known carcinogens. Plants are trying to kill you. <laughs> well, they're doing a pretty lousy job of killing us, aren't they, Dr. Anthony? Spinach, kale, lettuce, celery, cabbage, cucumber. Dr. Chafee is another online health spruker who's been taken to task by Dr. Ids, the self-styled TikTok health watchdog. You don't need a gym membership. You can just run along here. Dr. Ids says while wellness trends might be new and exciting, the simple fact is that what will actually keep you healthy is fairly ho-hum. And that's kind of the problem. What is the secret to good health? The secret is actually not so secret. Simply following general lifestyle principles that have been well established for decades. Five times a week of 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity. Making sure you're consuming sufficient amount of plant-based foods, reducing our intake of red meat, and also having lots of whole grains. These things aren't a secret. That's pretty boring. It is boring. It's boring, but you know- I'm not gonna click on that Instagram ad. Exactly. And that's why those things don't gain the reach that the other trends and fads do. And that's part of the problem. People think it's a secret, it's no secret. If you need living proof that too much focus on your health can be harmful, then meet Sophie Smith. As a teenager, her devotion to fitness and diet became dangerous, a condition known as orthorexia. It was a terrible secret that she was able to keep from family and friends, the only outward sign, her shrinking weight, clearly seen here standing next to her identical twin. I was listening to all these external messages to tell me what to do to be healthy. So lots of, you know, influencers or, um, yeah, people online. Can you explain what, what the actual problem became and how this manifests into something bigger? So for me, it became very obsessive. I'd feel super anxious, really guilty. I was depriving myself, I guess, of a lot of things, you know, of a lot of not just foods, but experiences like having, you know, birthday cake or having a good time at Christmas because of all the like, you know, lovely, delicious foods, like those times would be really stressful for me, which is very much, yeah, what I discovered, I guess, through my recovery was, yeah, that I'd really kind of swung in this direction of being so obsessive um, around food and exercise and weight to the point where it was, yeah, really detrimental, I guess, to my health. It was a long and painful road to rehabilitate. So these days, it's quite an achievement for Sophie to be able to browse a convenience store looking for a snack, a mission that previously would have had her fretting over the health implications drummed into her by online zealots. Now, she is the one in control of the narrative, working as an advocate, trying to expose the perils of our health obsession. What I 
see is a lot of people, you know, not intending on getting an eating disorder, of course, but their intention initially is a bit of a health kick. But those things can very quickly, you know, become a very slippery slope into an eating disorder. Sophie's definitely not the only one saying the industry needs a health check. In fact, it's led to a bit of court dispute playing out right now, involving one of Australia's most successful wellness influencers. I'm here for you, I've got you, and I created this formula for both of us. Do you think there are plenty of people within the industry that think, can someone shut this bloke up all the time? All the time. I mean, there's, there's people trying to shut me down right now. A factory in working class Nowra on the New South Wales South Coast isn't quite where you'd expect a wellness revolution to be born. And the boss here, Jimmy Sirvi, isn't exactly Gwyneth Paltrow either. I'm a bogan from Nowra and that's just who I am. And no advertising, no um, big marketing agencies could, could polish it up. But Jimmy has managed to craft a successful health startup of his own, the vitamin company Life Botanics. It's found a niche in the market by undercutting its rivals on price, claiming competitors waste money on glitzy marketing spin to lure you in. I like to think of ourselves as the Aldi of the industry. You know, no bullshit, we just give you the product. Like you give you one key example and one moment in time where I thought, you know, we've got to start making these products. And that was when my sister-in-law came over to my house and she was looking at a, a vitamin brand that was in the market at the moment, heavily influenced um, people in bikinis dancing around with these products. And it, they were like 50 bucks for a pack of these magic supplements. And I looked at them, I looked at the ingredients and I said, this shit only costs like five, six bucks to make. So at, at most 10, 15 bucks to retail. And I looked at it and I thought, well, this is absolutely garbage. And w looked at it and thought, well, we just make our own. How do businesses get away with markups this big? I think what they do is they, they play on people's vulnerabilities sometimes. And, you know, being in that sort of situation myself, sometimes when your back's against the wall, you pay anything, you know, for health, for, for to look better. I think where people find it hard to justify that is for themselves, is that they'll pay almost anything to feel better about themselves. And I think it's unfair. Do you think there are plenty of people within the industry that think... Can someone shut this bloke up all the time? All the time. I mean, there's, there's people trying to shut me down right now. I mean, they want to shut me up because at the end of the day, they want to keep making all of that money. One person who definitely wants Jimmy to shut up is Jessica Siepel, the extraordinarily successful founder of Sydney-based vitamin brand JS Health. Skin science, elevated by nature, formulated for everyone. It's time to live your own skin. The 34-year-old entrepreneur's empire is now estimated at close to half a billion dollars, having cultivated a huge following online with a beautifully curated social media presence. But there's nothing pretty about the spat she's now involved in with Jimmy Siervi. She's taken issue with the owner of Life Botanics doing price comparisons between their products to help promote his own vitamins and disputes his claim that his products are identical. We had a very sophisticated uh, way of advertising. We took a picture of their product and took a picture of our product, said, have a look at the back of theirs, have a look at the back of ours. If you like theirs, you'll love ours. Half the price. And that really upset the apple it cart. It really upset the apple cart. So they said, we're gonna launch action in the federal court. A bit nervous heading into court. Uh, first time, really don't know what to expect. Never sat in the courtroom before, never never been in front of a judge. Are you, are you channeling your Daryl I am, 100%. Today? You know, like, I even watched, the, I watched it with the family on the weekend. And we travelled with Jimmy for one of the court hearings where he's accused of making misleading and deceptive claims. The dispute is ongoing, which is why Jessica Siepel decided not to speak with us. But win or lose, Jimmy is hellbent on continuing to hold a mirror up to the glamorous side of the industry. You know, what really bugs me is that uh, a lot of these businesses, um, affluent businesses, what they try to do is promote a different type of lifestyle. And um, what we're doing is we're just cutting through all that bullshit and saying to people, hey, you know, you don't need to pay $60 for a pack of supplements. You know, you can pay 20 bucks and you get the same exact same product directly from the manufacturer. 
some people would say, this is just your marketing spin. Like, you know, everyone's got their own sales pitch. Yours is on the price point competitor. Well, I don't know if it's much about marketing spin, but it is my marketing angle is the fact that we don't charge you brand tax. But at the end of the day, we're talking about people's health and nutrition. You know, we're talking about um, health and nutrition for vulnerable people. And for me, it's important to make sure that people know the truth. Jimmy's far from the only person in wellness circles to raise concerns that the industry promotes this idea that you always have issues that need fixing at exorbitant costs. And many believe it stems from a kind of elitism. Do you think that's kind of the problem with wellness at the moment, that it is perceived as just being for rich white people? Yeah, I do think it's a problem. And look, I think rich white people should get healthy too. Dr. Will Cole concedes that the modern wellness movement often promotes a kind of health that is completely unattainable for the average person. It's not enough for us to be just, you know, a white guy or a white girl and say, well, th of a certain socioeconomic background and say, well, that's what wellness is for. The access and tools and empowerment and education, there's a disparity there. That's why we have podcasts. That's why we have group telehealth models to make them more accessible and more affordable, because it is an issue. Um, but we have a long way to go. We're going to do a little test to see if your cerebellum is working well. Now, you Back at right. Eden Health Retreat, I'm learning I've got a lot to work on. Can you give me an OK symbol on the right hand? Yep. And a peace symbol on the left? And switch. Oh, my God. And switch. And switch. Oh, my God. <laughs> so right now, your brain is working What's both sides. <laughs> Dad, to go with this one? Did you do the, the OK and the peace? Fast as you can, back, forth. <laughs> so this makes me feel better about myself now. The person that runs the joint struggles with it too. This is, this is comforting. I, I also need to learn to do better. For the health retreats manager, Shona Phelps, an important message for guests is that there is no one cure-all for achieving your wellness goals. Then we're going to inhale slowly through the left nostril. But in an era where we've never had more so-called experts telling us what to do, blocking out all the noise is actually a pretty good place to start. Did you have many people here that have come and, and tried, you know, a fad diet or, you know, a drastic lifestyle change and said, no, I think I just need to go back to the basics? Absolutely. I think I can speak for most of our guests have tried different things to find some balance in their lives and there is no quick fix. It's a long game. So they are just discovering that every day that little change makes a big difference. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the Nine Now app.